first item is the annual renewal of the health screen insurance <coughs> retirees and their spouses. Um, as the sheets that I have provided you uh, prior to tonight and the one that's in front of you tonight, the premium for an individual under that plan uh, this last year or the year we're in the is about $110. Uh, the rate increase is going to 169, which is a 52 percent uh, rate increase. And uh, currently, the retiree pay is $40. <coughs> there are uh, some changes, and Rick uh, with THW uh, brought this to our attention, and uh, we're going to propose that to you tonight and Rick if you want to talk to them about the changes and okay. any of the other part the answering questions about the coverage we'll come back and then talk about what we're recommending to you. Well the, the retirees that are uh, over 65 are moved to an advantage plan uh, and when we compare that with our uh, health insurance uh, cost uh, that's a considerable savings for us to move to an advantage plan. So uh, the individual cost on the health insurance is uh, $619 uh, for an individual and $1,287 uh, for a retiree and a spouse. Uh, so the uh, using the Medicare Advantage plan at a cost of $174, $221.48 uh, for the retiree and spouse is uh, certainly a, an advantage for us. Uh, we currently have 46, uh, uh, my records show that we have 46 uh, uh, at that total cost, and the city and the retirees are uh, just some $61,000 uh, annually. Uh, our renewal, uh, which was substantial, uh, uh, would take that cost up to $93,000. Uh, for the uh, city and the retirees. Now, the, as Robert pointed out, the retirees do pay some portion of that, so not all of that is the city cost, but uh, a considerable amount. Uh, making some small changes uh, in this would, uh, would help considerably that uh, instead of the uh, uh, the 93,000, we'd see that uh, drop to some 77,000. And the changes would be to uh, increase the uh, uh, drug card copay. Uh, it's uh, currently 515.30, and we would move that to a 10, 20, 35. Uh, and then uh, we, we might take note that the, uh, the current health insurance now, uh, uh, health insurance product, our copays are 10, 20, 45. So, uh, somewhat mirrors that now with the, uh, with the change. Uh, we, we have some duplication in our coverages and the fact that uh, retirees are offered the uh, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, vision plan uh, here through the city and they also have some vision that's built in with this uh, with the uh, uh, health spring product. Uh, so uh, we would uh, look at uh, removing that uh, so that there is not any duplication. And then there's a foreign travel benefit so that if someone travels outside of the United States and uh, got sick, uh, they would uh, help to get them back to the United States uh, if we moved. Uh, and that, uh, those policies, if we've got one or two retirees that would go off to somewhere, I like that there's policies out there that would be available to, to them if they wanted to do that. Uh, but when we remove those uh, uh, three things, or change those three things, uh, then our cost uh, would be $77,682, uh, down from the $93,000. Uh, the little sheet that I've given here that uh, we went to uh, we went to Blue Cross to see if uh, if they would uh, help us with this, and uh, you can see that they weren't any help. They uh, actually were much higher uh, than uh, our renewal. Uh, 
uh, with uh, Student Health Spring. Uh, so uh, uh, they did uh, they did say they would have uh, match the plan that we've got at 303 and a quarter, but uh, uh, our renewal was 169 per So. Not much help there. The uh, vision that you're taking out, that is basically a duplication. Uh, yes, yeah, if, if someone would like to have the uh, uh, Blue Cross vision, they have that opportunity. The sheet that I gave you just shows the individual numbers, but again, you're going from 110 to 169. If you remove those three items, it gets it at 140. Uh, it's still a 30% rate increase, uh, even with the 140, uh, which is pretty substantial. Um, in this, we're also recommending to you that we move uh, to a percentage for the retiree uh, pay portion and that's on the sheet as well and that would be uh, 33 uh, percent this year they paid 36 percent so that actually would go down a few percentage <coughs> points, but it's going to be on a higher number um, would be 33 percent for the retiree and that would make it uh, 47 dollars instead of the 40 for them to pay and then for the uh, spouse, we've recommended 45%, which is uh, um, with the spouse and the retiree together, that would be 130 uh, versus the 115 that they're paying, so it would be $15 a month. Um, let me say this in the broad <coughs> picture of things. This is a uh, critical issue I believe, for the city. Not to get into that tonight, I'm just giving you a heads up that we will ask you to come back for a work session and let's take a look at the whole entire picture. Um, because with health insurance premiums having done what they've done over the last uh, 15 years, you most cities have made some adjustments on the benefits and so uh, we do have some numbers to bring to you and some recommendations to bring to you and take a look at it. Um, the city has not been putting money into a sinking fund to pay for future retirees and so that unfunded liability has built up substantially and so we want to come back and address that with you in a few weeks in a separate work session. This tonight is for the 2015 renewal only, which is effective January 1. So this would be for 2015, not to deal with the whole big concept of what type of retirement benefits for, as far as health insurance can the city afford. Yes. 
Now the big, the big end of this, I might tell you that the big end of the savings is off the drug carts, not off the division of the uh, border farm trail. The big end is off the uh, uh, drug carts, some $24 of that, and then about $4 of you know, 30 cents of that, and then the uh, for the division of the, uh, the uh, farm trail. Didn't we have a discussion where just what our increase would be over the next 36 to 48 months, we would have had to, I think, raise property taxes around 50 cents just to cover what our gap was going to be for insurance. And so it's, it's, we have we'll to give you those numbers uh, when we meet again, but we're looking at three and a half years of the whole $1 million we expense to the general fund just to cover. And that's a 10% increase. That's based on 10%. And by making these changes, we're getting it down to 30. So that just tells you how conservative that million dollars is. Uh, estimate. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
but I also think as we move th through this, we need to engage the workforce, and we have some meetings where the employees get the opportunity to talk, and not just us, so we can get some feedback, and we might find some ideas, and we may find some, if we find a consistency in what's important to the workforce, then maybe we put our dollars in a certain area where we think see things that aren't as important, but we've got to engage them through this process. Mm -hmm. We're just getting started, like I said, $16 million unfunded mandate. Successfully, already have a project in Franklin. I've been down to visit that one. Uh, Ron and I have been advanced for a tour plan. I want to give Billy credit to Billy's guys out here tonight. Billy's got to put, put me and Ron together. So I'm going to give Billy credit for setting that, getting it started. But uh, certainly, if I'm going to start doing this, City King, see if you got your little paper that comes out, the, the uh, Kansas City paper. <coughs> Mine and the faces in uh, Kings will make a paper there last week with the project in Kingston. The second one up there, too. We did this, the site on top of the uh, the convention center downtown Nashville. The guitar on top is your solar project. So this one night that Ron give you some of the key points of it. It's a pretty thick agreement and you flipped over and helped change the legal side of things. But uh, same contract Sweet Franklin has with the same company. But with that being said, Ron, you want to give us a short overview of, of a thick document in the packet tonight, I guess. Thank you. I appreciate being here. You know, the, the talking points is exactly what I would tell you tonight. Um, We'll build it entirely with our firms. It's not even financial consideration of the city for the solar panels and that sort of thing. All of the electricity that we produce, the solar panels produce electricity. All of that electricity is going to go to the grid at this moment. That's what's in what we want to do. And TVA is going to buy everything we produce. They've uh, made the city a contract offer for 20 years to do that preliminarily accepted it and I think there's, there's another piece later on once we work our piece out and uh, so for 20 years the electricity is it, um, what I need to do is recoup my investment and during the period of time when I'm recouping that investment I will get 90% of the money from TVA y'all get a check from TVA you'll keep 10% <coughs> Send me 90 percent, and that amount spelled out in the contract. Once that investment's recouped, it should take about seven and a half years. We figure out. Then the split changes, and the city of Lebanon gets 80 percent, and we would get 20 percent. If we would operate it, maintain it, we'd still own it for the balance of the 20-year contract. At the end of the contract, uh, three things basically can happen. One is, is we can just extend the contract as long as you want to do it, as long as we all agree to it. Number two, you can buy it out at that point in time. Or number three, uh, you can just tell me to take it. We appreciate it, but we've had all the solar system you want, you know, for whatever reason at that time. Uh, there are also, uh, there's some buyout provisions in the contract along the way. You can the store before I borrow money. Know, to do it because I'm going to have to borrow some of the funds to do it. And um, so there's a six month window up front before I get started where you can say, yeah, Mr. Miller will build it. We will buy it once you build it and commission the TBI and there's, there's a price set for that. And that's, uh, and then the next window of opportunity can't come until five years later because of the investment tax credit that I would take. If you don't buy it initially, I'll buy it expecting to get a tax credit and the IRS says I have to hold it for five years before, you know, or otherwise they claw back the amount of that tax credit from me on the program basis. 
Uh, so that's real straightforward. I believe it will serve the city about three million dollars. That's what the plan going to the general fund. I brought, I don't have it with me tonight, but a meeting I had here with Jeff and some of the other city officials. <coughs> uh, I brought a bill from Franklin that showed in the real world what that project is doing. And it's, you know, it speaks for itself. So I think the three million dollars is real, it's, it's real world. The point of Franklin is I think is one fifth of this one. The original Franklin is one fifth of this one, I believe, 100%. That's right. And so that's it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to do it. So <coughs> I've been on top of the music <coughs> center now for a couple of years, powering that, and uh, powering Franklin, powering Kingston. I'm on 4HA hospitals, you know, over 50 projects statewide. Freeman way up every office building they've got in the state of Tennessee. If you know those people, I'm on top of them. Six of their apartment complexes. Lots of other businesses. Cliff Everly, locally, if you ever go by his shop, you can't see it from the road, you have to go to the back side of the building. The Cliff makes it. Okay, <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. I'll answer any questions. After the after the twenty year term, if the city so chose to renew your contract with us over the years, say the city still be getting the the twenty 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 five thousand dollars a month or eighty twenty yes. Eighty percent. Even at that, I mean, does it still go on with you and the maintenance? Okay. I'm happy we'll do we'll continue doing the maintenance because we only will operate and maintain it. It's in our best interest to keep that thing really running well because <laughs> we're splitting revenue. So that's that's my incentive for 20 years to do it thereafter. There's um, another opportunity here, and I think this might be the last year you said uh, with TBA to apply. So uh, I've asked you to go on make an application similar to what we've already done and see if they'll accept it and if they do then uh, we can do this a second time. And, and Mayor if I may, I, I talked to TBA since the meeting about that and the, the lady there who oversees this program and what she told me is is that Lebanon is eligible for another megawatt project. Okay. And last year you weren't. I, I didn't say anything to y'all a year ago, it was November the 25th, I had a meeting here, saw my notes, because at that time you were limited to one megawatt, and that's the size of the project. This year they extended that, or expanded to two megawatts. Now, Mayor, what you don't know is, uh, what I was going to tell you tonight, is that we can do another megawatt, it just can't be the same site. Yeah. we have got to move, it, it's got to be somewhere else. City, City 11 can own up to two megawatts now in the program, but they can't be at the same site on the same meter. We got sites. We got sites. So you, you pick the site, and I need to know that before the end of the year, Joe. All right. Other questions? Well, basically, all we're doing here, we're taking a fish process, <coughs> just sitting there now. We're going to lease them to the land. Zero for the lease, but by 19, 10% return turned the first seven and a half, eight years, and 8% return after that. And I have Franklin's bill right here, and like I say, I just put it back up there, but they're one fifth of ours, it's pretty solid energy, and they received back at just 54, 34, and that was the month of September, this is September 19th due date, so you know, it's a bill. So, if you're five times that, you spent about 25,000, so 10% of that, I was at 2,100, so they noticed that. They, that's immediate. And then, you know, then obviously in seven, eight years, hopefully it'll be 25,000 coming our, or 20,000 coming our way. And right now we do plan to send it back to TVA. Just if you could at some point in time, turn around and use it at your own, at your own plan. You like to put them in an area where you have a high need, in case you said you want to turn it back into your own operation. At this point, it's our, our bit to set it back to TVA. Also, this is John D. John Thorne money, one. Huh? This is the John Thorne money. No. Uh, oh, when it comes to us? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. You're leasing yeah. property at the Bush Rock Plant. Yeah. If you turn it back into Bush Rock Plant, it's different. Different discussion, but right now, with my mind, I don't need your own money. The idea was to keep it in general fund. All right. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for having a work session with me. I've met with 
each of you, either individually or in advertising meetings, um, about this. Um, you know, if there's any questions, you know, let me know at any time, and I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, hopefully, we have a little bit of a basic knowledge of what's going on. Um, the main thing that I want to do today uh, is answer questions, any concerns, go into detail, uh, whatever we need to go into. Um, then um, the main thing that I want to accomplish is go over comments that have come in and how we version of this zoning code update that the Planning Commission has recommended. Now there's been some comments that have needed to be addressed in that time. We've had a 15-day, actually 17-day comment period that ended yesterday. So we've collected comments, um, over almost 30 comments um, in, uh, in that time. Some of them need to be addressed. Some of them are just comments that were made. Um, so I'm going to go over in detail so that you know exactly what's changing from the version that you have been sent um, uh, so far. Um, does it, if, if that's agreeable to everybody. Um, I did want to run over some, uh, some, uh, some background on this. Um, I, I do have the consultants from Parsons Brinkerhoff who have been working on this since 2007. Um, okay. So I've got some background knowledge that, that beyond what I know about this project, if we, if we need to go back that far. Um, I'll just start off with a, just a brief overview of the commission. Yeah, we do have planning commissioners, board of zoning appeals, um, um, uh, members here. We've got some local citizens. I don't see any yeah. story. Jack and Jack. Jack's in the back. Um, this started in 2007, uh, and I don't know the whole history about that, but at some point it was stopped. Um, it was brought to the, to the city council and never got any further. Um, I got here in 2012, and I didn't pick this up for about nine months because I didn't want to jump into something without knowing the city of Lebanon well enough to move forward. Uh, we've been working on this for about a year. Really picked up um, the pace about six months ago. I've had over 20 advertised meetings with the um, Planning Commission um, uh, <coughs> Zoning Code Update Committee. Um, we presented this and are still waiting on comments from Public Works uh, Committee and the Board of Zoning Appeals. The Board of Zoning Appeals would have commented yesterday, but the meeting, we didn't have a quorum, so the meeting has been moved. Um, I expect Public Works Commission to um, comment on it on Monday. Um, we've had um, monthly developer meetings since August, and they have been um, given an opportunity to comment on this. Um, we reached out section by section in the spring to developers, engineers, architects, and surveyors to comment on this. Each section we do a section each week so that there, have, there would be time for everybody to uh, comment on this. We've had two public meetings in the comment period. Uh, we've had a um, 17 day comment period that was advertised to every media outlet that we know of. Uh, a press release was sent out. Uh, this has been posted on the website for 15, that was 17 days. Um, and uh, that's just a brief that's the public input that we've been seeking and been trying to bring into the process. So um, we, we have it going out and, and getting input as best we can. Um, so what, were some of the, what were some of the developers' comments? Well, when, when we started looking at this, there were two ways we could go. We could try to get the whole zoning code that we have now and just address every single issue and just um, uh, work on that, or we could go back and um, um, do um, just the minimal changes. We chose to do the minimal changes, and you can expect in the future our bucket list of changes that need to be voted on individually may be coming up, you know, as we, as the city council sees it as a priority. The, the comments that were great, um, a lot of them had to do with site plan, <coughs> site review, um, just 
changes that needed to be made, kind of detailed things. We ended up, um, we were thinking about doing redoing the whole landscape ordinance uh, requirements. Um, we ended up just based on um, comments from developers and 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 uh, uh, engineers, um, architects, just backing off on that because we would have we got to the point where we would have had to hire a um, urban forester to get it done. What we did end up doing, we're keeping, we're adding a requirement to um, put street trees into, or, or parking lot trees, shade trees and parking lots. So we're going to keep that, um, but we're mostly going to address the landscaping at a different time. Um, um, a lot of those comments just got uh, integrated into the code, so I'm trying to think of <coughs> in detail. But it was about six months ago that those came up. Um, we've had some um, uh, developers still giving us comments, and they're in our comment list um, that I have here. Um, are there any questions about that part of it? Any, anything else I need to go over? So you backed off the landscape and portion right now? Yeah, the, we, we had considered completely changing the landscape requirements in the city and the um, site plan requirements. Um, that was just going to be an overwhelming task to accomplish. It would have put this back um, probably a year if we were to do that. So we went back with pretty much the language as best we could that we have right now. For, for those for those sections um, we did um, as far as site plan requirements um, the street trees is a big thing that we add or the the parking lot trees is a big thing we are adding um, we are also um, the the apartment complex regulations are not defined in our code as what an apartment complex is those have come out um, there's some confusion that will need to be addressed at some point, how we handle that. Um, that you said parking lot trees? Park trees, trees and parking lot trees. I don't know where you were here at the time. Down there we had a bunch of trees down there by uh, Kroger. Mm -hmm. I mean, great big trees. <laughs> and they were always coming there one day and cut every damn one of them out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Look, there, 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 before you do street trees, get real familiar with the cut practices of trees and the power lines around here. That's right. uh, we have changed the list of recommended trees. Um, we've got a list in one of the, in the appendices, um, trees that we don't want, shrubs that we don't want. We've gone through that and, and upgraded that quite a bit. Um, we've gotten quite a bit of input on that. Uh, had some people from uh, uh, Cumberland University that uh, that helped out and, and gave us some uh, spelling corrections on the map and, and different things um, beyond what I know. Um, when we come out of this, do you think or what do we do with sidewalks is going to make sense? Well, right, we've already addressed that here, and if we want to change it, we can. But or, or currently, I mean, yeah, currently the way sidewalks work. It's all good. We don't, because this, you know, the thing I want to do is, I think it's important as we're going through this process to make a clear statement that we're that we're good to go. But I haven't heard anything in so long, so I just want to make sure. Yeah. Because that was the biggest thing that I used to get, and it's still the biggest complaint I have with with my constituents which is who's responsible for my sidewalk and how do you fix my sidewalk and and they just have this expectation that every sidewalk in the city is going to be maintained and repaired and fixed by us. And they, a lot of people have this impression that when a builder build something if they don't build a sidewalk in, in front of them. I've heard a lot of people say, well, what about the sidewalk fund? And they think money's going into a fund and that we have this pot of money that we're going to eventually repair all their sidewalks with. And that's... We, we do have a sidewalk fund. It's not a huge sidewalk fund. I mean, that's not sure. it's, right. But as development happens, we, we have raised <coughs> every, every parcel in the city based on how close it is on, uh, to amenities that would need sidewalk access, um, and there's nine of those those criteria. You can get a total of 18 points. 
Um, the highest one in the city is 13, but we, so we have a map that shows where the, the sidewalk priorities are. We use that as a basis, not as the, the absolute standard. But if we don't see that there is a connection to a sidewalk, that there's anything for the sidewalk to go to, and we can use that money somewhere else better, and we don't have to maintain it somewhere else that doesn't need it, we're going to recommend at the planning commission level that they don't put in sidewalks, but that instead they be paid in the of, and that is going to be fun. It's not very big right now. There's not a whole lot we can do with it. But well, as we're going through this process, if, could you, if you could just maybe give just a one-page handout that I could use or the other council members could use for sidewalks. Because when people hear that we're changing the zoning, to me, that's that's 95% of the big questions from the average citizen is how does it relate? What, what is the zoning going to do for me getting a, a new sidewalk? And if we could just hand them something that says, here's here's the responsibility of the sidewalk for the city, here's the responsibility, here's what we do, I think that that would help me at least alleviate a lot of questions. Like I said, I can't speak for you guys, but that's been my question. Yeah. What's what are these changes going to do to get me a new sidewalk? Okay, and and to be clear, this zoning code is going to keep what we have, but we did change it within the last two years. That was about a year ago that we changed it and and done it. And then there's some things that you're asking that are beyond the zoning code. But I think we can get a document together, with kind of a <coughs> frequently asked question about sidewalks. That would be great. Type, type question. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to move forward with this. Um, and I'm trying to do this as simple as I can, and this is a really complicated document, so um, I am going to do the best I can with that. Um, I can't say this is going to be the most exciting. Um, a lot of these comments um, we've gone over as we've met, and I've added more as they come in. Um, and I just want to do this in the most systematic way I possibly can. Um, like I said, it's not going to be terribly exciting. But there's some comments that we're actually changing. Um, we're recommending changes to, the staff is recommending, and the, the, the update committee is recommending changes. Basically, planning commission has recommended this document. These are things that have come up since the planning commission meeting. So we tried to address as much as we could before then, but there's some things that, and as you can imagine, this complicated of a document, there's going to be things. So number one, um, remove parking requirements for boats and campers and residential priority areas, chapter eight. Uh, page eight seven. So that's the first thing um, on this document, the first page. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from one through these, and each page is going to be uh, a new change. I decided not to print out a whole new code uh, because this wasn't finalized yet. I've only got the pages that I've changed stuff on. So the page numbers are going to be how they would work in the zoning code the full document. So okay. you're saying these changes are already reflected in here? They're not reflected in here. Okay. They're reflected in here. Okay. So okay. what works with like this page you can plug it in though. Right. What we've yeah. done. Exactly. You can take this page, plug it into what you've got, and you should have pretty much the document that we're looking for. Now if 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 I am making a change or suggesting a change that we don't like, we don't have to do it. It's it's um, we're just trying to address the comments. So in, re in relationship to number one, I've, I've taken out the um, section about whether you can park your vehicle in the front. Um, the idea is that we think maybe this is a better bucket list day, not necessarily it's a bad idea, just that this may not be the time to, to deal with that. This, this section that I'm taking out came to us from the 2007 version of this, um, it was, um, of the code. We do not have this requirement now, and that's why we're considering taking it out to stay with the status quo. So, but we do, we are keeping the language about not living in a camper on your property. So, so does it make sense for them to not be allowed to park or store in your front yard? Uh, we can, we can, I can ignore this if you want me to, but um, 
we can either handle it on the bucket list and just pick it up on another day, or we can just leave it. We can leave it in there. And I don't have a problem either way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't want you know the SS Minnow Park. In somebody's front yard. <coughs> I, I can't think of that Clark Griswold movie. Front <laughs> yard, will never. I mean, I've got those relatives; they won't ever leave. <laughs> I, I think we should ignore it. I mean, because it makes sense. It's just saying you can't park it in their front yard. Right. That, well, that, that, that makes sense. Well, it depends. You probably need to break that down. You know, like uh, like a lot of guys have bass boats. Yeah. You know, they're not that big. They're not nice to me, but. You're going, I think you're going to run into a lot of what you're saying, Fred. Yeah. I think you're going to run into this into some smaller. Yeah, because I have a boat. I have a little 15 foot boat. Because I got in my kind of back. But I'm just saying, I used to, when I was out fishing a lot, I parked right beside my uh, carpool. Where I could easily get to it. I'm just saying, we probably need to break that down on the size of boats. And right, so let's, let's leave it in and just put that on the bucket list. You know, a lot, a lot of homeowners, that's this what we was discussing the other day, a lot of homeowners associations mm -hmm. have this in, not the group. Uh, I think we're going to have a few of the, the smaller areas where it might be. I, I just put it real bluntly. I got some areas where if they don't put it up close to the front door, it'll be gone in the morning. <laughs> and let, let me just, the reason, one of the, the things that I try to do with my do this stuff is think about the re the other side. What if we what if we do this? What if we don't do this? So obviously if we we leave this in then nobody's parking their their um, boats in the front, nobody's parking their RVs in the front, and that's good. Um, but the other thing that happens is we're starting to we're going to lose some commercial um, and industrial areas to more storage facility units that that really you know, they're not going to employ anybody that's going to be storage areas, but they're going to go into land that could be used for other things. The other thing that goes into this is the enforcement um, of this. And that's probably the biggest reason why I'm lean, I would lean towards not putting it in right now is we would start to be the enforcement mechanism. The way this would get enforced if we put it in the code is, um, and this is, I'm not the expert, but this is kind of how it would work. They would have it in there for more than 24 hours, because that's what we say. We give them a letter saying you have so much time to move it. They'll move it. They'll put it back. We'll send them another letter. Tell them to move it. They'll move it. They'll put it back. I mean, the, the enforcement of that criteria is something to think about. You know, what, what about a campus? You got the same situation on that, you know. Some of them got these these big buses. Yeah. You know, some places got them to park right beside the house and then you got these smaller campus, you know, the, I don't know yeah. what they call them, but that's yeah. something that really probably can break down, you know. And it's really yeah, it's really not defined that way. I hear what you're saying, but the one thing I don't ever want to I don't ever want to send a message that because enforcement may not be easy, we're not gonna enforce it. Hell, if that's the case, we might as well take down the speed limit signs because right. it's pretty hard to enforce. Right, that's true. Um, I mean, it's our job to enforce it to the best of our ability if it's in there. And I don't think the enforcement piece should ever fall in. Hmm. You, you enforcement it is the city policy. You expect that people are going to do this thing. And I don't think it's unrealistic, but, but who's the expert? I mean, if it, you know, you're the expert. I mean, I want to go with what you do, but it just seems like common sense. Don't put it in the front yard. Well, I mean, Andy, Rob, I mean, I mean, the whole idea, please. The whole idea, we've got a lot of stuff in the zoning code that is archaic. We're just trying to clean up the embarrassing parts. Any one of these little items could shut down the whole process. And we were trying to just pick them out, Look, wait till later, and deal with each one of these boats, campers, there's a You've seen the, the bucket list. There's a ton of these things. We're just trying to get the code cleaned up, and then we'll come back and deal with these specific things. So these being things pulled out of recommendations from planning and not based on a comment from a citizen? Because I was under an understanding we were talking about it because you received the comments. I guess I totally it's, misunderstood. It's a combination of the two. Yeah, uh, what else? Let me, let me address that. These are comments from citizens when we see a comment like this and we realize that there's some disagreement on the 
the commission and that there's some disagreement about whether it should be in there. Our default is go to back to the status quo the way it is now because nobody's asking for, nobody's asked us to put this in there. So it's just in there um, right now. And put it on the bucket list and deal with it later. Uh, is that bucket list? I know we went over that. Yep. I'm sorry. I put that next to me. I'm sorry. Because my, my, my mistake, and that's my mistake, I just figured a citizen sent this thing in and then we're pulling out because I did it and because of the specific thing. I, I, keep, seeing, I keep seeing Randy Quay standing out there with his hat. <laughs> I, I, I was part of the, the meeting as outsiders, you know, not officials. There were several of us engineers and other people. What we were trying to do on our part was not getting anything controversial, okay, and make it clean. And what what was proposed was things that are non-controversial, but just over the years it got layered and layered and layered, and the things added and nothing subtracted. We're just trying to clean up the things that 99.99% of the people could care less. It just needs to be cleaned up and pull the controversial stuff off to be looked at later. Absolutely. Okay, so if it's if it's pulled out of here, you guys have already seen it, and you yes, guys sir. are okay with it. It's going right back to the status quo. You may change it later, but nobody suggests it change now. Just the stuff that is antiquated, that for years has been layered, that nobody's ever looked at. We just they ask us just to look at it, the easy stuff to clean a lot of mess up. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks. Just I totally understand now. I'm on track. And we really want to try to make this happen. We put a year's worth of work in this and. But we don't want some detail that's very legitimate to derail the whole process. Yeah. I'm going to move on to number two. Yeah. And I'm good now. I'm good now. And I'm just going to say that one's going on the bucket list. That's going to be an item we're going to. And his bucket list is something that may be controversial, but you can take one at a time later. And you guys can give us a priority on that bucket list. Yeah. Which are the things that we want to work on first? We have no agenda. We're just trying to get the archaic language out of the zoning code. You tell us the things that you want us to change. Gotcha. Moving on to bucket list number one. Um, number two is there's just two images in our um, um, historic district guidelines. This was just the version that was approved by the Planning Commission as as the attachment to the end of this zoning code. This is really just cleaning up um, a Scribner's error. Um, so F10 and F11, it's just the image. It just wasn't there before, it is now. So we just wanted to put the image in there. Um, so we're just fixing that one. Um, number three, um, the table on 815. Um, our, our standard for parking spaces is, um, is 108 inches instead of 96 inches, and so we just uh, we just wanted to change that to be consistent with the rest of our code. The next page is an illustration, same adjustment. We're going where it says 108. The original version had it had 96. We're just changing that. That's just a simple <coughs> fix, um, and that addresses comments three and four. Um, Gravel is, a, is an issue that has come up, um, whether we can require new parking lots to be gravel, to be paved is not an issue, but existing parking lots become an issue. We were going to address this in more detail, um, and we have, uh, we're going back to the language that I was in the code in the, in the 2007 version, I keep referring to the 2007 version. I don't know what year it was actually, it was last edited before I got here, but it was started in 2007. So we're just going back to language that was in the 2007 version. We were trying to clean up some stuff, but uh, we think that, that on 8.30, the gravel issue is just something that needs to go on the bucket list. We won't worry about it right now. So the idea was to just fix that. Um, on page 838, um, item number two at the top is, <coughs> is the highlighted. Um, and actually, I'm just seeing item, page, 
item number three also needs to be changed, but it will be a duplicate. Uh, it should be a duplicate of what's on two. The idea is that it needs to include three three over one. It can't be <coughs> to see it's supposed to be three over one and greater. So we're just going to change that to include three over one or three to one uh, so three to one seal. And that we'll do that on both two and three. So I'm going to make a note to fix um, item three as well. Uh, and then the landscape requirement for single family and duplex. We had some comments about that um, and how, how that would work. Um, the easiest thing right now to do is just to pull it out and, and consider that as a bucket list item, um, whether we're going to require certain landscaping on new single family and duplex um, developments. And that's not highlighted, but I've got it crossed out there uh, and that's on the same page. Um, <coughs> item eight is an item that is going to get addressed in the map. I'm going to come back to that. Um, but basically, this, this involves um, Ticks Ward, the areas north of um, Hickory Ridge Road and Ticks Ward that are, um, that are shown on the original map as RR. Um, we're going to go to RS20. Uh, they're less than three acres, so they would they're, they're going to fit a little bit better in the RS20. So that's something that uh, that should address um, item 8 and item 9. Um, there is an issue with this 50 foot setback versus 75, and 50 feet is a, a pretty large setback. And we can go, we can go back to 75. I'm, I can't leave it at 50, but, um, but that's the, the map will take care of um, at nine. Um, ten, the, the, the figures on 10 were just unclear because the asteries tricks were the legend for it was on a different page than the rest of the document. So we've redone this whole image, this whole graphic to just make it clear that what the asterisks were meant for. Um, we've actually labeled everything instead of having the asterisks there. So that's, um, that's cleaning that up to make it easier to use. The original version, you, you would never know what, you, what, it, what it meant. Um, mini storage, um, this goes to, to appendix C. Um, we have it list. We had it listed as general personal service. I think it works better in transport, transport and warehousing. By doing that, um, it limits it to the industrial areas, which is what we have now, and um, a commercial district. And and in addition to changing uh, appendix C, we're also changing appendix B to switch it from the commercial service area to a conditional use in the general, um, for the commercial general area for transport and warehousing. That makes more sense. <coughs> it's more keeping with the status quo. So that's what Appendix B2 changes. There's just two tables with that. Okay. Um, we really get back at 12, we start to get into repeats of comments that have been made before, and then some other comments that don't really need to be addressed. Uh, 13 is what I talked about, and also addresses uh, item nine, so that's the same thing. We've already gone over gravel, um, boats and campers. Um, uh, again, 15 is gravel, so you can see we're having feedback on this. Granny flats are on, and this is really more of a comment on the bucket list, but uh, uh, granny flats, we don't really need to change anything like that. 
on that. 17 is a letter that we got in this comment period about townhomes. Um, there's not really anything we need to do with that one. Um, that's the one I should tell the council members. Um, 18, again, is brand new flats. 19 is more about the bucket list and priorities that we have on it, but the code doesn't need to be changed based on that. Number 20 is an individual property owner who was asked to be um, zoned what our current zone is. He's, he's currently in our current zoning district, B6, um, and he would like to go to B3. This is the Blackwell um, Realty. The neighboring property just got zoned to be B3. Um, I am reflecting that change on the map. Um, I had a conversation with Joe about that as being appropriate. It doesn't have to stay that way, but it does make sense. And we're going to get the, the, uh, the next item actually ties into this a little bit too. Um, the next item is not in this packet that you have in front of you. On a staple together, it's a, it's a separate staple item behind it. Um, and this is the comment B6 is going to o, OP, and the way it's written right now, some of the, the protections that B6 have. B6 is a commercial neighborhood type office zoning that's meant really for Main Street. That's how it was designed. We didn't have a historic preservation at the time, so it was kind of a reflection for some of the houses on Main Street that were going commercial in the office. Um, the Historic Preservation Commission has asked that we retain those protections. That gets a little bit more complicated than I could just throw into this, but um, that's something that I'm going to have the consultants work on and have to of this to, to make that work. But essentially, we're just trying to keep the status quo with the protection of the B6. Now, number 20 on Legal Pike is Zone B6, which is a zoning district <coughs> for Main Street. Clearly, that's not Main Street. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I've been throwing it in the possibility that a way to solve that issue would be to make it a B3 or in, in the new code, it would be a CS, commercial service area, uh, instead of the office professional. I don't know if that made any sense. I hope it did, but uh, I went over with the councilman and the board. So, so anyway. Um, what area are you talking about, B6, like down in from the high school? What is it, the strip mall? No, B6 is just on Main Street. Most of it's on Main Street. It's It's got, if you look through this document that I gave you, there's about seven pages going over um, restrictions on demolition and how you build and what the reviews are. It's really an attempt to have some sort of historic preservation without the, the historic preservation district being there. Um, not trendy. Mm -hmm. Basics? Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's, it's, a, it's traditional office. <coughs> so, anyway, kind of like this uh, down here. Quite uh, bland. For which one? Just give an example of. Yeah, uh, the last one we rezoned on Main Street. It, you know, you there's, the, uh, there's the Sonic and then there's a the shopping strip next to the Sonic. And then there's a check in the cash, and right across the street from that check in the cash, there's a house that we just rezoned not too long ago, and that's a B6. Um, yeah. And that was just to give them the option of using it for the same size yeah, strike for house. Okay, yeah. Right. So that's now a B6. If you skip one house, then there's a couple more B6s right down from that. They're really meant, it's really meant to have offices on main streets in historic <laughs> buildings, um, close to residential. I mean, it's really it's bland. It's yeah, bland, it's right? Yeah, and you have a demolition yeah. factor tied into it. Right. 
So, so that's what the B6 is. Um, and most of the properties are, are right there. There are three exceptions to that with the B6. Um, there is the Blackwell Realty Office on Legal Pike that we've talked about. On Noah Courts, um, come off the bypass and keep going south, Noah Courts, right over there, there's a hair cuttery uh, school um, uh, over there. That is B6. And then we just rezoned a piece of property on Castle Heights North and Coles Ferry to B6. Those three do not fit the normal um, uh, B6 zoning district. And we have added the COs. One thing that would be appropriate, I have not reflected on this map, because I thought that would be a little bit presumptuous, is to change, we don't have anything that's a CO, commercial office zoning district. It's a new district that we created for office use, commercial office use something that we've heard that we need, but we don't have. Those, uh, the, the Coles Ferry, Castle Heights property, and the on Court would be good candidates to just be the first ones, because they're office uses, but they're not, um, they're, they're not really in the traditional B6 historic areas. So, does that make sense? The cops are still in the house. Yeah, because they're not housing a new development. There's no point in having them come to the planning commission to see if you demolish them. Um, you know, there's, they're just outside of that the Main Street corridor. Anyway, and that's not reflected on here. Right now, they're going to the OP. You can change it to, to CO if you, if, if you want. Um, but the Blackwell property, they've asked to be B3 or in the new district, CX. That's when I stopped a few years ago. Yeah. Okay. Item 22 uh, is a comment. Uh, doesn't need to change anything. Um, 23 is again the B6 and, and retain the, the uh, protections for that. Um, 24, it was pointed out that the colors on the CG and the CS districts weren't distinguishable. We have fixed that. Um, everything that's B5 and B4 right now are going to CG. Everything that is B3 is going to CS. So that's fixed on the <coughs> version of the map. Um, um, and then 25, we, got, we, we do have that in our packet here. These are just typos that um, uh, we highlighted that need to be fixed um, in the historic preservation section. Um, Grammar. Yeah, just. just uh, fixing those things. Um, 26, um, mostly what's going on there, and I actually left it out, but it's, um, I've got it. <coughs> uh, I tend to leave it out. It's, there's a table that we have that has the, the uh, commercial neighborhood listed as neighborhood commercial, so I'm switching that back, and the uh, uh, downtown commercial and commercial switch. So every commercial district should start with a C, so we know it's commercial, and then have the rest of the name after that. Um, I have, we have actually switched um, college, university to university campus, so that the C would not be at the front, because we have to back and be confused with a commercial district. Anyway, and then 27, um, there was a request that RM6, um, the um, the height limit on that may need to go on the budget list. The request immediately was to take the 35 foot requirement out, um, leaving the three foot the three story for now, um, and that can be looked at at a separate time. 
and that's um, <coughs> the main reason for that. Instead of requiring somebody to end up with a flat roof on, what they could do is still do a gable. And then didn't you start changing? Didn't you talk about maybe creating later a zone that would kind of mirror Hamilton Station that says, okay, somebody wants to come in and do another development. You've already worked out the kinks. You've got everything set up, and then you could push it, and it would be zoned to meet the same requirements as that project. Right. Yeah. I, I think we we got a development that that, that uh, seems to be popular with the way it looks and, and the, the feel of it. It would, you know, it makes sense to kind of steal those requirements from the SP and create a separate zoning district or uh, possibility so that. People could use those standards to see that they're working just fine. Uh, there's no real good reason not to allow them to come other places besides just the, um, the uh, ESP. District. And that would be a bucket list item? That is a bucket list item. I call that the transit oriented and the traditional neighborhood. Gotcha. Um, okay. You know, that's, that's where those fall in there. Any questions on that? Rush to the uh, just like to say thank you to all the uh, people that have been involved in helping us get to this point. It uh, was kind of stagnant for uh, a few years. And, uh, you uh, picked up the ball and laid it down. Thank Love you very it. much for everybody involved. Paul.